All right, so in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to advance your timing on your injection pump on a OM605, 606. So you don't need to remove the manifold. I did that and I'll explain why later, but basically um, there's three screws, okay? So the first one is that one right there. The next one, sorry that the lighting is so bad, but the next one, if you can see my finger down here, uh, you can't see it. Um, Is the next one I'm trying to show you. It's right under that bolt. Um, if I can get this out of the way. Okay, see where my finger is? Right here, and underneath it, there's a 13 millimeter. They're all 13 millimeters, so the other one's right here. There we go, right there. Um, right there, and then the other one is hard to see, and I can try putting my camera down there, but I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I can't see anything, but basically you're just gonna feel, feel around the base of the vacuum pump, and you'll find like a groove. Um, I have my finger on it right now, but I don't know if I can get my camera down there to where you can see it. It's really hard when the vehicle, when the engine's in the vehicle, but it's right here. Um, it's basically a triangular shape. And so you're gonna loosen all three of them, just like one or two full turns, they don't need to come out. Uh, the way that they're mounted is like this. They have a square, so um, you can loosen them. If you loosen it too much, the square will come loose and then that can fall down. It's just harder and you don't need to have it that loose. Um, once you've loosened them all, right here, this is an M8. So you're gonna put a eight millimeter on there and if you wanna advance the timing, you're gonna turn it counterclockwise. So you're gonna turn it like this, right to the left. What's going to happen is the top of the injection pump is going to start turning and it's going to get closer to the engine. You can do with the manifold on. There's plenty of room down there, but I advanced mine quite a bit and I'll tell you why. Um, so I had to remove the manifold and the reasoning behind that is because you're fighting against these hard lines on the fuel and they're hard and you're going to be fighting against them and, ev and against them and eventually they're not going to want to budge and it's going to get really hard and you can't turn that ma very hard because the ma you can see it's just screwed into the block i think with like an eight or ten millimeter screw so it's not on there very hard and you can break that but you're just going to watch it until it it rotates some um obviously the right way to do it is to look at the the degrees on the crank and see where you're going and all that um an old fashioned way to do it is to do it with the engine running. So loosen everything, start the engine. You just need to put something underneath where the injection pump is because where it mounts to the engine, it's gonna start leaking oil. So you just need to put a, a bucket or a rag or a little container underneath there to catch it all. It's not a whole lot, but it will give you a nice puddle on your driveway if you're not careful. And so um, what you wanna do, the old fashioned way to do it is, I'm not recommending this, I'm just saying it's an option, um, is that you can run the engine and you're gonna listen to it to start knocking. When you hear it start knocking, then you're gonna turn it back a little bit. So you're gonna advance, 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 advance. Once you hear it start knocking, then you take it off until it stops. And that's a good place to be. That's pretty uh, advanced and you're gonna get some extra power, easier starting and whatnot. Um, the reason why I did it is two reasons. A is because I run higher bar uh, you can see I have an upgraded turbo over there and I have a stage two under there. Um, and I run 150 bar injectors and it's not gonna make a huge difference, but I do have customers every now and then that will be like, hey, I installed your injectors and my engine's louder. Um, and the reasoning behind that is that A, they're normally 135, probably your injectors are worn, right? These are 25 year old engines. So they've probably never been replaced, so you're gonna have old injectors. And they're supposed to be 135 bar, usually when I get them, and they've been on a turbo engine, they're usually like around 100, so they're like 30 bar, less than they should be, 35, and then you're gonna put on 150, so they're gonna be a whole lot more pressure, and they're gonna be louder, A, because just they're new, you have shims and springs and things inside of there that are um, fighting and getting seated and wearing in, so they're gonna be louder because of that, B, because of the higher pop pressure, and then C, when this engine was made uh, 25 years ago, 
everything was timed perfectly, right? So your timing belt, your timing chain was perfect. Injection pump, crank, cams, uh, blah, blah, blah. It was all timed perfectly, right? 25 years later, 100, 200, 300,000 miles later, everything is worn, but it kind of all wears together. All of a sudden, you're going to replace one of those elements, like your new... Um, it can happen when you put a new injection pump on, when you put new injectors on, you're going to replace one of those items that's new and it's popping and performing as it should be. So a way to kind of compensate for that is by advancing your injection pump. You're going to get a bit more power. You're going to get cleaner burns. Like I, The other reason why I do is because I run on waste oil. And so um, waste oil isn't quite as energy dense. It's something like 5 to 10% less energy than diesel. So it's just a little bit more smoky and it helps it start easier, helps it run better. Um, so that's it. That's how you advance it. Just a quick, make sure that obviously when you're done, you tighten those three bolts. Um, now, like I said, you can do it with the hard lines on, but if you get to a point where you still want to advance it and you can't, don't just keep cranking that M8 cause you'll break it. That's when you need to take the manifold off, loosen the hard line so that you're not fighting any more resistance. And then it's going to rotate freely, however you want it to put everything back together. You're going to have to bend your hard lines a little bit cause they obviously were not in the original place and put everything together, tighten the three bolts over here, uh, check for oil leaks, you know, start it and run it a couple times while you're doing this to make sure that it starts up quickly. It's not smoking a whole bunch. You're not knocking, you know, just make sure everything's good. That's it. Um, 